Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Chetan Farke and uh, I'm back. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about free radicals. Alright, so um, I was supposed to talk about uh, my life's journey and how I got, uh, how I got here and uh, the food choices I made and my experiences. But uh, yesterday I talked about antioxidants and I thought this would be a, this would be a good, uh, good uh, follow-up to, to that video. Uh, we, we hear these words all the time in the news and uh, in the media, people talk about them on the, uh, on the internet uh, and so on. So, you know, it might be nice to, for us to really understand what free radicals mean. Uh, free radicals are not, uh, uh, you know, it's not something that comes free. It's, uh, it's really called free radical because, uh, you know, every molecule has a nucleus. This is a lesson in uh, physics, has a, nu has a proton a neutron rather, and a proton and an electron. All right, so uh, these free radicals have, uh, typically molecules have pairs of electrons. So these free radicals have one missing from the pair. So that results in this unstable behavior, and that's why it's called free radical. So uh, typically we, when we talk of free radicals in the sense of uh, medicine and human body and human health, we are talking of oxygen containing molecules. Uh, that uh, that create problems when they when they lose electron. So all right, so they're unpaired electrons. They're pairs of electrons. When you lose one, you be, you become a free radical. <clears throat> so what? Why is that a problem? Well, first of all, let me say that everything that the body has, any uh, function or any reaction or any molecule, it's it's not a, a, a waste. In our body, there's a purpose for every object. So uh, free radicals play an important part as well. They have certain signaling mechanisms for cell growth and cell death and so on. So they're important. What is uh, not good is if there are too many free radicals, but that causes a problem. Why does it cause a problem? Because uh, these, these guys are nasty. What they would do is uh, they'll go to their neighboring uh, molecule and they'll steal an electron, either steal it or donate one. So this process is called oxidation or uh, reduction. So anyway, this why is this a problem? Because see, if somebody steals an electron off of a molecule, that molecule cannot work normally anymore. So imagine uh, in this neighborhood, in my neighborhood, uh, I lose some money, so I steal money from my neighbor. Now then my neighbor steals money from his neighbor and keeps going on and on and on. And ultimately there's a poor person in the end who doesn't have money to take care of their uh, household business. You know, it's just an example to demonstrate that uh, this can be really a problem. Now, if you think about uh, the body, if the DNA, which is a protein, if some of the uh, electrons are taken away, then the DNA will be damaged. It won't be able to work properly. And DNA, what does it do? It replicates. So if the damage is replicated, it can cause, it can be the start of cancer, right? It can uh, go on and create more troubles. Now let's think of <coughs> lipids. Now in the body, in the blood, we have uh, lipids in the form of low density lipoproteins or commonly known as LDLs. Now these LDLs, they can become oxidized because of free radicals. Free radicals can steal an electron uh, or donate an electron from uh, LDL, but anyway, it causes oxidation and that sets off a chain reaction which can eventually result in heart disease. All right, so we know that these free radical business is not good. The question is, uh, what are some of the reactions in the body that produce uh, free radicals? So let's look at them uh, one by one. You can classify them into internal. These are, uh, uh, these are things that produce free radicals from within. And then there are factors from the outside, external, which can also produce uh, free radicals. So in terms of internal, normally the body produces uh, uh, mitochondria, uh, sorry, uh, uh, free radicals through mitochondria. Now, mitochondria are like the power generators of the cell. We have billions of cells in our body. Each cell has a mitochondria. Mitochondria produces energy. Without mitochondria, we cannot do much. So naturally, it uses oxygen and uh, it produces free radicals as well. So uh, that is a big source. Another uh, place where uh, free radicals can form is uh, inflammation. Inflammation basically means uh, there's an injury to the body, one of, some part of the body, 
and that injury results in body sending more blood to that part so there's swelling there's pain the reason to send more blood is so that uh, cells can be sent there to heal and repair the damage that's happened and whatever the waste products are to take them out of uh, out of circulation so that process can also increase free, rad free radical formation so um, uh, I'm going to detour, take a little detour here and talk about protein. If you eat too much protein, if you only eat meat, for example, and don't, or if you only eat animal based foods, you know, meat, dairy, and uh, uh, eggs, and nothing else, then we have too much protein going on in our body. Same thing if you eat beans, beans, beans all the time, you're getting too much protein. So that can cause inflammatory uh, reaction in the body, it can produce. Uh, uh, free radicals and can be a problem. Same thing with fat. If you're eating very, very fatty food, you're putting yourself uh, in, uh, in trouble because you're producing a lot of uh, free radicals. Uh, the process of uh, fat making uh, being toxic for us is actually called uh, lipotoxicity. So this is, uh, this is a known fact. <clears throat> All right, so moving on to another factor, exercise. Exercise, believe it or not, can also produce free radicals. Why, you may ask? Because when we exercise, we are working our muscles really hard, and the muscles tear. There are small tears that happen in those muscles, and tears are injury. Injury leads to inflammation. All right, so you, you get it. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, many years ago, I heard a story, a news story from India, that a CEO, a very important man in the company, uh, he died. He was 40-something. He was a very fit man. It got me thinking, what happened? This man had suddenly had a heart attack and he died. You know, young man, he was fit, he used to exercise a lot. He slept only four or five hours a day. So I wondered what happened. I figured it's probably just uh, genetics, right? Or maybe he doesn't sleep enough, you know, only four hours. I need at least seven hours. So maybe that was a problem. But uh, after I read this story about uh, free radicals, I realized that this man exercised a lot. He had a high stress job. You know, he's probably producing a lot of free radicals and not e eating enough vegetables and not eating enough fruits and whole grains. Uh, anyway, so external external uh, causes of free radical formation. First is pollution. Now, for those of you who live in India or even in very very busy cities like UK, I mean London, or even cities in Spain or Beijing, any big city actually, any metropolitan city that you think of it's polluted and uh, you know when I was growing up uh, when I came home in the evening I used to ride my bike I came home in the evening I would wash my face and I could see you know black water running down my face it would all be black from all the pollution that uh, I was exposed to that can increase free radical formations in your body smoking cigarette smoking marijuana any kind of smoke that goes inside uh, is going to cause uh, same problems radiation Radiation poisoning can also produce a lot of free radicals and create all kinds of problems in the body. Drugs, certain kinds of drugs can also have the same problem. Pesticides as well. Pesticides, if your food is pesticide laden, guess what? It's going to stimulate free radical formation in your body. So, uh, you know, uh, I want to talk about this idea of moderation. So if you think about uh, moderation, you're, you can think of uh, you shouldn't get too excited or too happy or too sad you should you know you should be moderate in your feelings so uh, that's a good thing but when it comes to smoking you know moderation doesn't really help there smoking is bad you know whether you smoke one cigarette a day or ten uh, it's you cannot say that you know I'll only smoke half a cigarette you know, once a month or it's addictive and it's going to add create uh, problems so moderation is not good when it comes to smoking pollution or drugs too you know, as much as possible, you should take drugs only when you need them. And when you don't need them, you should try and make every effort to eat healthy food, have a healthy lifestyle so that you don't need as many drugs. Same with pesticides. You know, you can, if you, if you can afford it, buy organic. If you can, if it's, if it, if the weather allows you, grow some of the food in your backyard. That way you can get more uh, uh, organic stuff. Now I'm going to do a separate blog about organic foods and what I've learned about organic foods and why you should eat organic food. And, uh, and it's exciting. Two years ago, a very dear friend of mine asked me, why organic? And uh, I didn't have an answer back then, but today I have a better understanding. 
All right, so that's all I wanted to share with you today. And, uh, you know, uh, in the Baha'i writings, it is said that let your morn be better than your eve. So I'm hoping that uh, after hearing this information, you're able to process it and think about your life circumstances and see how, uh, how, we, how you can apply the information in your life and how we can uh, grow from there. So uh, that's it for now. I'm sending you warm wishes from cold Canada. Be well and eat well.